Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show uh, how to get the Kerberos SDR up to uh, functionality-wise about where I guess you could say the Kraken SDR uh, is going to be once it's out, and that is um, by using these switches here. What you see in the picture, they're out of stock right now, but this is just to get an idea of what I have set up here. So I have four switches attached to my Kerberos SDR wire, just as you see here. Uh, back to the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we'll sh take a look at how that works with the latest Kraken SDR image and also I wanted to show uh, some the same person that did these switches also has did a pull request that's going to add um, GPS support and uh, some other some other things to the Kraken SDR software to allow it uh, to ultimately work with uh, DF aggregator which I've shown before okay so let's get started I just wanted to show what this looks like Kraken RF github page if you pull it up and you go to the Kraken SDR DOA change to the client side graphs which is the latest uh, branch excuse me at uh, at the time of this recording I guess you could say you scroll down you're gonna find where you can grab the image that I have and also I'm not going to turn off periodic tracking because I have those switches if you don't well then you'll need to do that and you'll need to do some manual work with uh, removing the antennas and whatnot like you used to on the uh, old Kerberos SDR software you can see I've already did the EEPROM update so I'm not going to cover that I did that to my Kerberos SDR and also you can see uh, about the Corey's uh, third-party switch support how that's built in and how that's going to work so I've got that image burnt to a Raspberry Pi I'm on Dragon OS Focal right now recording from the desktop and I'm going to SSH into the Raspberry Pi Pass or um, username's password or username is pi password is Kraken SDR. Now here's where we're gonna make some changes. Uh, if you look under, there's a pull request did a few days ago. That's gonna add location data to output and some other fixes and GPSD support and so on. Now this. Uh, Pi image, I've not added GPSD. I'm not going to show that in the video. That's pretty simple. Just adding that from the package manager and configuring it and getting GPSD to work with a USB GPS. Uh, I, I'm not going to cover that in this particular video, but what I will show is uh, we need to change into the Kraken SDR underscore DOA folder. Well, there's actually two, two deep. Go to this directory and what we're going to do is we're going to set this up with uh, Corey's uh, software here so we'll do git remote set URL origin and we're going to change this to his project page now this works because this was pulled from Git, and so that's how I'm changing the URL. We'll do a Git pull. Now, what you'll probably find is um, when you do this for the first time, it'll complain about a, a PY file. Um, and what you could do is you can do a Git stash save of that file and set it to the side. And then we'll do a Git checkout of his location data branch all right so once we've done that we'll make sure that the pi sees the okay we're good now I have actually let me see here I have both external power and the USB I need to turn both on that's another thing uh, unless you 
configure an internal uh, jumper I think inside the Kerberos SDR if you have external power or at least for me uh, when trying to power the Kerberos SDR plugged into the Pi the Pi will just um, reboot so you you might have to turn that external power off until the Pi is uh, fully booted let me make sure we get okay so we're good so now all we need to do we'll come up a directory and we'll start the uh, DOA uh, software here. Now because I don't have that GPSD, once we let this start up, Cori software will pop up a little uh, warning here in a second about the GPSD not found. That's fine. I'm not using that right now. Give the software a little while to start. Can't find GPSD. Okay, now keep in mind we need to access the IP address of the Pi. So that was at uh, 118 port 8080. So here is the new, well, the new interface with also uh, Corey's additions down here at the bottom for the station information. Uh, you can change that ID, which I'll show you where that's going to come into play here in a second. I'm going to leave it uh, XML. I changed the location of static, and I just looked up some random thing in Montana, just typed in Montana, and put a uh, lat and longitude there and kept the heading at zero. Because this is static, uh, I have my antenna array. Actually, I don't even know, with antenna one possibly pointing north so I just kept the heading at zero uh, what you would do though is have that GPSD and then you could put GPS and now you would be moving and you'd be getting your heading uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to probably let's see 95 I'll try 95 one I'll hit update receiver parameters and let me think what else should be it should be good a lot of this other stuff I'm not going to cover right now let's just get up and running here we'll click start processing the uh, give it a second here awesome thing about here is the noise source state and the syncing and all that's gonna happen uh, on its own I see it says 416 let me refresh the page Let's try this again. 95. 1. Okay, I hit update receiver parameters. I don't know why that didn't save the first time, but uh, maybe because the processing wasn't on, but now it's changed to 95.1. The noise source state automatically enables the switches that are on the Kerberos SDR automatically uh, turn off the RF input so that the board can sync and then it opens back up to let the RF in so all this is automated so you can see the huge improvement right there without having to take antennas off and things like that so we're good we're running now we can check out the spectrum Let's see you got a little bit uh, sign of the radio station there now obviously if I was setting this up for real I'd have the circular array properly configured and I'd do some more fine tuning so that I'd be getting accurate lines of bearing to that radio station. We can check out DOA estimation but this is probably good enough for this demonstration here. We can see our uh, direction of arrival angle. So that software is running. Now here's where we're going to show the other uh, nice thing about Cori software. We're going to come over here on Dragon OS. This is the latest Dragon OS Focal. I'm going to go to User Source DF Aggregator. And we can take a look at what DF Aggregator's options are, which there actually is a lot. You can create a file with a list of receivers. So if you had multiple, which I've shown in past videos, and I'll put a link at the end of this one. I'd encourage you to watch to see what all you can do with this. but. You can put a list of receivers with the IP addresses. Um, you can, um, well, you can change a lot of different things, but I'm just going to show, we'll use sudo d 
PDF aggregator, we need a database file. And I'll, I'll just stick that uh, let's see, home dragon, we'll just call it test. And because I don't have that file set up, uh, I'm just going to start in offline mode so I can get in there and then configure a receiver. The port number 8080 is fine because that this is running local in Dragon OS, and 8080 for the Pi is of course over on the Pi, so that's not gonna that's not gonna mess anything up. So we're gonna start DF Aggregator, and we'll open that's running in the background. We'll open up another page 127.0.0.1. And you can, of course, change what IP address that's running on if you needed to access this outside of the local network. So now this is running the, the cesium engine here with uh, Corey's uh, additional overlay software that he's added here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to delete what I was messing with earlier and take a look at Corey's DF aggregator page here it's got a nice uh, quick start guide I just reference this every once in a while because I forget the URL you can see what his software uh, the DF aggregator does what I'm mainly looking for is the URL that we need here so or the format I guess I should say so we'll come back over here add a receiver change its IP address to the IP address of the Pi we're working on. So obviously this computer that I'm on is on the same network as the Raspberry Pi, but I've shown videos where I've done this over uh, cellular and devices were mobile and everything else. So we'll add that station URL. Now we can see the importance of the station ID. There's that location information tuned to. It's pulling all of that off of the XML file that uh, is being hosted up on the Raspberry Pi. So let's see, I should be able to uh, also double click and see that information that's being grabbed uh, from the Pi. Well actually that is the IP address of the of the Pi. You can see where that's being hosted. But let's see, we'll go over here, double click on this guy zoom in and what we can do is we'll enable the receivers but you can also uh, change your your um, power level that you're being concerned with your confidence level you can change the distance of the the point so if you had multiple uh, Kerberos SDR units on here throwing lines of bearing they're going to create intersections and they're going to create points within ellipses and you can you can modify all that but uh, let's turn this on so you can see what it's gonna um, do here for you so uh, get this out of the way zoom out we can change uh, I don't have the cesium map key that you can put in at the command line with DF aggregator so some of the uh, imagery is limited I I do have a uh, an offline map set uh, in Dragon OS, but really you, you probably want some good data there, so let it load. So now we can see we're getting the lines of bearing, pretty consistent line of bearing from the uh, let's see, come out a little bit more. And that lob line of bearing is, um, I, I, I'm wanting to say that may be uh, adjustable. I honestly can't remember. But now you can see if you had multiple of these, you're essentially uh, doing what the Android app does, uh, but within Dragon OS, within Linux, uh, with this DF aggregator. Uh, you could have multiple uh, stationary or mobile, which the icon would then be, of course, moving the lines of bearing. The intersections would be uh, generated so you can uh, direction find on that particular 
uh, frequency that you want all with this uh, improved uh, uh, software running on the uh, uh, Kerberos SDR which is a huge improvement because I, I remember before having to take the antennas off restart the software all that stuff it's all automated now now that's of course relying on these switches but uh, I'm, I'm sure maybe more can be made uh, but any day I would um, hope that the uh, Kraken SDR itself would be out and then uh, you could reach this level of, uh, and, and well beyond and use a DF aggregator as well. So, anyways, that's just kind of the uh, uh, quick get up and running and showing how this can work with uh, DF aggregator. And I know I didn't show GPS, but that's really easy. Just adding GPSD, configuring that with your USB GPS, and then you can be mobile like I've shown in the past. All right, I think. I've covered everything. If there's any questions, ask in the in the comments. And um, all right, have a good one.